The cover call is often touted online as being the best way to generate consistent cash flow. However, how many of us actually have the cash to buy 100 shares to write calls on? Let's take a look at AMD right now. It will cost us $11,661 to buy 100 AMD shares. And if we were to sell a call expiring 43 days with a strike of $130, we will be earning $375 for an upfront capital of $11,661. That's a return of just 3.21%. What if there was another way to generate consistent income with much lesser premium upfront? Introducing the poor man's covered call. Anyways, Darren here. For those who are new to this channel, I've been trading and investing in options since 2008 and I'm here to just spread the love on YouTube by making videos on option trading strategies, trade execution videos as well as my trade reflections. Before I begin, the usual disclaimers, options are definitely risky, especially if executed wrongly. So if you are new to options, do yourself a favor. Research and paper trade first before putting real money to trade. In this video, I will be sharing how a cover call works, how the poor man's cover call works, the difference between the two, and I'll end off with my thought process when placing the poor man's cover call. So if this is something that will interest you, do me a favor, scroll down, click the like button, and smash the subscribe button for more options related content. In order to understand the poor man's cover call, we first have to understand how a cover call works. If you would recall from my past videos, the call option gives the option buyer the right but not the obligation to buy 100 shares at an agreed strike price on or before an option expiration date. And the option buyer will get this right by paying the option premium. Hence, if we were to become the option seller, we would then have the obligation to sell 100 shares at the agreed strike price on or before the option's expiration date. Therefore, when we execute the covered call, what we are doing is essentially buying 100 shares and selling a call against those shares. And if the price of the stock goes above our strike at expiration, we will then be obligated to sell the 100 shares in our account to the person holding the call option contract at the option strike price. Let's contrast this with the poor man's covered call. For this strategy, we will want to buy a long-term call option with at least one year till expiration. This is known also as a call option leap. This leap will be used to substitute the 100 shares required for that covered call. Next, we will want to select an option that is deep in the money, preferably one with a delta of 0.7 to 0.9. The delta over here refers to how much the price of the option would change for a $1 change in the underlying stock. Hence, a 0.7 delta will mean that for every $1 increase or decrease in a stock, the price of our call option will increase or decrease by 70 cents. Therefore, the call option with a 0.7 delta will act just like 0.7 of a share. In addition, the delta also gives us the gauge as to the probability for this particular call option to remain in the money during the option expiration date. The last step will be to sell a short-term out-of-the-money call option. My preference is to pick one that has a 30 to 45 days till expiration with a delta of 0.3. This will give our sold call a 30% chance of actually being in the money during its expiration date. Now let's put everything to practice. For this trade, let's choose the stock ticker symbol AMD. If I were to perform a covered call, I would need to buy 100 AMD shares. Looking at AMD right now, it will cost me $11,661 to buy 100 shares. This amount may be too much for someone with a very small option account. Let's contrast this with the poor man's covered call. I will be using the call that expires on the 21st of April 2023, and that call has 421 days till expiration. Looking at the $100 strike, we can see that the ask is $33.95. This will mean that it will cost us $3,395 to buy one call option. And the delta for this strike will be 0.7. This means that this call option position will go up 70 cents for every dollar AMD goes up and vice versa. And as mentioned earlier, the delta here also means there is a 70% chance that this call option will expire in the money. Therefore, at one glance, we can see that if one does not have $11,000 to buy 100 shares, then the poor man's covered call might be a cheaper alternative as the upfront is just a fraction of that. Next, we will look at the returns. 
Let's choose a call with 43 days till expiration. That will be the 8th of April, 2022. If I were to open this chain up, I will notice that the $130 strike has a bid of 3.75 and a delta of 0.3. Let's now compare both trades side by side. If I were to perform a covered call on AMD, my initial principal will be 100 shares and that will be $11,661. Let's assume we were to sell the 8th of April call with 43 days till expiration. Our premium collected will be $375. Hence, our return for this trade will be 3.21% in 40 days. Now, if I were to perform the poor man's covered call, my initial principal will be just $3,395. And let's say I sold the same call, I would collect $375. Therefore, the returns for the poor man's covered call would be 11%. Now, before you start dumping all your money into the poor man's covered call, let's go through the two scenarios that may happen. Scenario number one, AMD trades below $130. If that were to be the case, we will pocket the $375 and rinse and repeat the strategy. Scenario number two, AMD trades above $130. Should AMD shoot up, then our returns for the covered call will be our strike minus the cost of our shares, multiply that by 100 and adding $375. This works out to be a return of $1,339. Divide that by the initial upfront capital of $11,661 and that's a return of 11.48%. Our returns from the poor man's covered call will be calculated as follows. We will convert our bot call to 100 shares of AMD at $100 per share. However, we purchased a call contract for a premium of $33.95. But let's not forget, we did receive $3.75 by selling the call. Hence, the break-even of each share will be $100 plus $33.95, which is the premium paid, minus $3.75, which is the credit received from selling the call. And that will equal to $130.20. As our sold call has a strike of $130, Hence, we will effectively be buying 100 shares at $130.20 each and selling them at $130 each, netting us a loss of $0.20 cents per share. And that works out to a loss of $20 for that position. Therefore, the number one mistake that I see most people doing is not calculating the break-even for their positions. A better way to trade the poor man's covered call will be to enter a call and wait for it to move in the right direction up before selling a short-term call against the position preferably above near-term resistance or a delta of 0.3, whichever gives a better premium. Hence, in summary, to perform the poor man's covered call, you will naturally want to buy an option on a stock that is trending upwards. The reason why is because if the stock keeps tanking, the lead call that we bought will keep losing its value and worst case, we may end up losing the full principal paid in the trade if the stock moves below the strike at the option expiration date. Let's contrast this to a covered call. For a covered call, we own the shares. Hence, if the stock keeps tanking, we have the option of holding the stock and selling calls against the position indefinitely till the stock gets called away or we sell the stock. A simple and fast way to find bullish plays would be through a technical screener. For me, I like to use Market Club. It's a screener that allows me to find bullish and bearish plays extremely fast. Normally, if I were to execute a bullish strategy such as this, I will first use Market Club to screen for the trend of the three major indices. If all three are giving me bullish signals, then only then will I even consider such a strategy. However, if these three are in conflict, then honestly, I'll prefer to wait it out. I'd rather enter a trade knowing there are bullish sentiments in the broad markets. Next, assuming the markets are bullish, what I will do will be to screen for stocks with bullish scores. This is done by clicking the score button over here. From there, I will shortlist stocks to buy call leaps on. Click the link below if you guys are keen to try Market Club for 30 days for just $1. Once I've selected my stock, I will buy a dip in the money leap, preferably one with a delta of 0.7 to 0.9 and wait for the stock to have a good run up before selling a short-term call against the position. As mentioned earlier, always ensure that the strike of the short-term call that you sell is higher than the break-even of your stock. If not, you'll be assigned at a loss. And if possible, sell that call above near-term resistance. The goal of this strategy will be to sell calls and not get assigned. This will allow us to earn from the appreciation of our call leaps and yet get premiums every 30 to 45 days. That's the end of my video. Please like, 
and subscribe for more options related content and do check out my next video where I share my spy leap strategy which has netted me 100% win rate for the year 2021. Peace.